The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola. realagriculture.com. I am back here with another Canola School episode and I have here with me Jack Payne who is with South Country Co-op. How's it going today? Really good Kara, really good. Wind's blowing, it seems to always blow every time we get together. <laughs> Typical Southern Alberta. <laughs> Absolutely. So today we are here to talk about cutworms. Now as you and I were just kind of discussing before we started recording here, it, it's been quite a few years since we've really seen cutworms yeah. in this area. However, there's some chatter that this year could be the year to look out for them. Yes. Cutworms are an interesting beast. Uh, we really don't have good forecast maps for cutworms. Um, you know, they're, they're a hit and miss pest. Um, the last outbreak I think I remember was around 2016, somewhere in there. So I think just out of that alone, we kind of go like, okay, could we be in for another cycle and whatever. Um, I guess the one thing is, Kara, this time of year, this is actually my favorite time of year because we got crop going in the ground, we got crop coming out of the ground, and actually field scouting right now is really important because if you've seeded a field, uh, a week or so after you've seeded, you should be doing some post seeding scouting you know, to check for emergence, check for seeding depth, uh, what's going on. And, and so this is a very um, a crucial time for scouting initially. And so this should be the time as well that we should be looking for things like cutworm. Okay, now what does cutworm feeding look like? You're out in your field, you're looking for, what sort of signs are you gonna be seeing? Okay, so typically, this is a little bit early for cutworm scouting today because this field hasn't come up yet. It was just seeded a while ago. But typically with cutworm, um, what we're looking for are areas of, of no crop, poor emergence, the bare spots. Now typically the, the uh, textbook will tell you it should be on hilltops. That's not always the case. The reason they say on, on the tops of knolls is because that's the soil that would warm up soonest. That would be where the cutworms would, would be occurring first because it's warmer soil, warmer temperatures, but not, that's not always the case. The other thing that we're looking for is if, if, you're, if your crop is up and you're looking down along a row and you see skips. In other words, you've got a section of row, maybe 18 inches, two feet of row where there's nothing. That's suspicious, because why would you have crop, no crop, crop? So that's where you need to look, because what's happening is the cutworm, it's kind of like a buffet. They get into a row, right? And it's kind of like going down the table, feeding as, as they go. So they, they, they snip off a plant, move down the row, snip off another plant, and so on. Now with cutworm, uh, recognizing the damage and the feeding injury is a little different than wireworm, okay? So cutworm, we have to remember, first of all, they can be feeding at the surface or just below the surface because they do feed just below the surface. Wireworm damage is always going to be below ground. So you may actually see above ground feeding uh, due to cutworm. Um, the other thing with cutworm is <clears throat> you don't have to dig very deep. When you're looking for cutworm, actually, you scratch you don't dig because if they are there, they're just below the surface. You don't have to go down two, three inches. They're not down that far. And the other thing with cutworm is usually morning or evening scouting is better because they do feed, they come to the surface in the evenings to feed. So they will move their way up to the surface. If you're scouting during the heat of the day in the middle of the day, chances are they're, they've gone down a little deeper where it's cooler. So that's, that's where you're looking for, for cutworm. Now, the difference between the feeding, not only just at the surface, is this. The wireworm is, is quite a bit smaller than a cutworm. What you'll notice with wireworm feeding is more of, uh, how would I say, just minor chewing damage to, to the stems, to the crowns, to the leaves, whereas the cutworm is cut. They chop it right off. And so what you'll find is the stem is just totally cut off from, from, from where the seed is and, and, and it's, it's, it's gone. It's, it's, it's just cut, cut right off with much more aggressive feeding. Um, also, I guess when it comes to cutworm, seed treatment can be a, of a, a, a significance. So I'm not gonna mention any products, but there are some products. When you look at your, at your seed treatment, look at what it's controlling. Sometimes some seed treatments give you insecticide control, but only for wireworms. Some do wireworms and cutworms. So if you don't have a seed treatment that covers both, you should be checking for cutworms because just wireworm alone may not provide enough protection against cutworm feeding. 
Now, can you spray for cutworms? Yes, you can. Um, now, unfortunately, the, 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 the list of what we can use keeps changing because of supply shortages and because of registrations, um, but you can spray for cutworms. Now, the thing with cutworms, the thresholds, the economic thresholds are quite varied, okay? Uh, if you look at, uh, at, the, at the guidelines, actually every crop has a different recommendation for what the economic threshold is. So for cereals, I think it's something like four to five cutworms per square meter. Um, if you look at some guidelines for canola, it's actually the percent of the crop that's affected. Um, so you really have to check your guidelines as to what they are because they do vary for each crop. Like dry beans are different than soybeans, for example. So, yeah. What sort of soil temperatures do they like? So you said they'll be feeding at nighttime. They like those warm, the warmer conditions you said on the hilltops, but evenings, does that mean they like the cooler conditions? Well, they, they are evening feeders because one, that's that's their uh, if they're feeding close to the surface, you don't want to be near predators, right? So that that's sort of a uh, just a um, the way they, they they've evolved is that they feed in the evenings. Um, like anything, temperatures and insects are more uh, active when it's warmer, but again, uh, to a certain degree, because when it gets too hot, then they don't like that either. But uh, but more, it's more to the development and of course where the soil warms up in the spring usually is on the sides of the knolls so again that's where the crop is first emerging and that's what they're attracted to so it's not so much that that is the cause that may be just where on, on a rolling landscape your crop is emerging first so that's where you're going to find them so and now do you want to talk about i mean we, we've kind of mentioned it but really elaborate the importance of going out and scouting for them how detrimental it can be to your final yield oh so i mean um I've seen situations, now again, it's, it's hard to measure, but I've seen situations where patches, I've seen pictures of, you know, nothing growing at all. I've, I've seen absolutely bare, totally decimated patches uh, of cropland where the cutworms have taken, have taken everything. Um, so what that's going to create is a problem later on in the growing season, because if you've lost your crop, now you've got this bare patch, what's going to happen? weeds are going to inv invade and now you're going to have these patches of weeds and, and whatever in your crop now you got a harvest problem because now you know you're going to have all that green material at harvest time and uh, yeah it just creates some some real headaches for you now you mentioned cutworms at the buffet um do they have a favorite crop they go after not really they're they're pretty opportunistic feeders i mean they'll hit canola they'll hit peas they'll hit lentils they'll hit cereals um yeah, they, they're, they're pretty indiscriminate. It's just pretty much wherever they, they have shown up, which again is hard to predict because there are no really good systems to predict for cutworms. So that's why I say, you know, you should just make post-seeding scouting uh, something that you're going to do anyway. And while you're out there digging around, scratching around, look for everything. Look for wireworms, look for cutworms, look for flea beetles, you know, check for everything.